before you uh, a very detailed uh, Landmore uh, simulator uh, asking basically And, and then a reissuance of the next slide for the class. Second, we have the mutual cancellation of GL5529, which is the information center of the and a reissuance of the U6529. And the third item being asked is for the extension, amendment, and restatement of the existing access. First off, I'd like to you know, thank the new staff together with their lawyers, uh, as well as Deputy Attorney General Julie Chino, who assisted uh, Kevin Moore from my office <coughs> working on this scenario and the various uh, amendments that are before you. Um, to start off, I, I, I don't, I'm not, I'm not, my general understanding of what we have before you is I think the first thing I should address is that this, what is before you is the lease, leases and leases, which is a land disposition. And there are basically changes that EDH is being asked, uh, asking this board to approve. Uh, and the focus of these changes is, and EDH is here and we'll probably explain it further, but is to, uh, from what I understand, is to make it consistent and conform to the concept comprehensive management plan approved by this board in 2009. Uh, separ separate that and dis distinguish that from what was before the board on the conservation district's permit for, and from what I understand, it's for the construction or authorization <coughs> to construct the 30 meter telescope. That was, is a separate conservation district's permit. I understand that is there was a request for a contested case, the board denied the request for a contested case, and I understand that matter was grant, granted the contested case. It's not a conservation district use permit, but the best case for the grant for the 30-year telescope case. And that matter is up on the other end. On the management plan back, which was approved in 2009, my understanding is there was also a request for a contested case, which was denied by the board. And up on appeal, and it was, the board's decision was affirmed. As I and so, the, the changes here uh, today is, 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 is UHS, you know, the UHS is necessary to perform the research to comprehensive management plan approved in 2009. Uh, Consultative process put in place over the past decade. 
And I think in a very nice, concise way, that summarizes why UH is here today and why we are proposing the changes we've made. The lease before you incorporates the conditions and the language, the requirements and the obligations on the university included in UH's master plan established in the year 2000 in the uh, conservation disuse, the, uh, the comprehensive management plan that was just referenced. It also uh, includes the mechanisms that are necessary for us to uh, honor our obligations under uh, Act 132 uh, relating to funds derived from Monopia. And fundamentally, it also provides uh, a basis for us to negotiate and renegotiate leases uh, for subleases uh, for uh, observatories on the, on the mountain. Uh, UH takes its responsibility as a steward for these lands with utmost seriousness, and we approach the department to include the obligations that the university has accepted into the lease to make it clear to all users of the mountain under what terms we're working. And I'd be happy to answer any questions. Any questions for you? Could you could you characterize for me um, in rough terms uh, the annual uh, income from subleases of, of facilities on the mountain? Um, income of uh, the uh, say the sublease rents. The sublease rents are currently at a dollar a year <laughs> for all uh, users. Simple. Currently, under the existing lease, under the proposed lease. The uh, leases for new subleases will require substantial lease rents, which under Act 132 must be put in a special account uh, for UH to manage uh, on a pay lands. Uh, has, has that account already been established? Yes, the account's been established. Those subleases um, are going through the same term as the existing lease? Um, yes, although I'll refer to lawyers for details. Existing subleases will be good through the year 2033, uh, unless they are renegotiated before that. Any new sublease um, would come back. expenditures and projects that have been, that have been um, activated. Let me ask Stephanie Nagata, the director of the Office of Monarchy and Management, to answer that session. Currently, the only uh, fees that are being collected by the university are from com commercial tour operators. And um, there are eight permitted tour operators. And uh, right now, we rent about about four hundred thousand dollars annually, of which uh, we have paid OVA in full for all of the monies due to them for the, for the past years up to 2007. So those monies are used uh, for 
uh, management uh, purposes for the road, road maintenance, uh, snow removal, uh, maintenance and <coughs> operations of the visitor information station, which is the key to the public. Is any of it uh, going to, say, environmental protection or, or remediation? Um, we use it whenever we have uh, instances uh, for, for environmental protection of you like that. Um, okay, right now, uh, what we're applying those funds are for for impacts and uh, that are directly caused by the tour operators. But we anticipate if there is any new sublease that's been negotiated, those monies would be used towards programs, management programs. Um, for, um, Members of the board, Chair Isla. My, my name is David Kuila Copper. I'm an attorney at Native Hawaiian Legal Corporation. I'm uh, here with Kalani Flores, who's from the Big Island, and he is a Native Hawaiian with traditional and customary practices in the lease area. Now, uh, I'll be speaking on his behalf, but he would like to make a short uh, statement to the board uh, that I'm concluded. Now we have submitted written testimony uh, to the board objecting to these proposed lease actions, so I'll do my best to keep testimony brief. Um, and we would also like to add that we are 
agreeing with and incorporating the objections that are, have been for, <coughs> put forth by the Office of Hawaiian Affairs. Um, the three issues I'd like to emphasize is one, whether the Board and the Department has fulfilled, fulfilled their duties to independently investigate Native Hawaiian practices and rights under the case Kapala Kai Kaina. Second, whether the Board and the Department will be in violation of Hawaii Revised Statutes 343 by exempting these leases from a preparation of an environmental assessment. And the third is whether the Board and the Department will be in violation of their high fiduciary duties to manage seed and land. Uh, very briefly, as a threshold issue, I think it is very clear, especially by the staff seminals that were put forth, that the Board and the Department have not yet fulfilled their duty under Kapala Kai. Kapala Kai says that when an agency makes a decision, they must do three things. One, identify cultural, historical, natural resources. Two, determine the extent to which those resources and the Native Hawaiian practices that depend on them will be affected. And three, to take any action necessary to protect Native Hawaiian rights. Now, this is the key. The Supreme Court was very clear. This analysis must be independent. It cannot be placed upon the applicant. Now, in Kapala Kai specifically, the court said the Land Use Commission could not rely upon a management plan prepared by the applicant to satisfy their duties to investigate and protect Native Hawaiian rights. Now, unfortunately, here we have exactly what the Supreme Court said you cannot do. And we see this in the staff submittal. The Kapala Kai analysis under the staff submittal says that we are going to use the studies and investigations done in the university's 2009 comprehensive management plan. Um, and obviously the university here is an applicant. So therefore, the studies done in the management plan were not an independent investigation. And I think this is, can be especially highlighted by the fact that we've heard that the university attorneys assisted with the staff of submittal, which included uh, this proposed Kapa'a Kai analysis. Okay, so I, I think it's clear, before any action can be had, the board and department needs to do their own Kapa'a Kai analysis. They cannot rely upon the management plan, which is what is being done here, and is what the Supreme Court prohibited in the Kapa'a Kai case. Now second, I'd like to briefly address the issue of whether an environmental assessment should be prepared. The staff submittal proposes to exempt these leases from the preparation of an EA. However, this type of action is not entitled to an exemption by law. HEPA is very clear. An environmental assessment must be prepared for any action that proposes the use of state or county lands. It is true, some actions can be exempted. The Supreme Court has told us in Kahana Sunset that this is only for very minor projects. And the staff submittal explains this away, saying, well, the board uh, should commonly use this as a practice of exempting leases generally. However, leases cannot be generally exempted from the preparation of an environmental assessment. See, when you look at Hawaii Administrative <coughs> Rules 11 200, that chapter defines the use of state lands as any lease, permit, easement, license, etc. Therefore, a lease cannot be considered exempt if the definition of, of a use of land includes the term lease. Second, even if leases could be generally exempt, sensitive areas are not eligible for exemptions from the preparation of an environmental assessment. It can't be disputed here that this lease area is very sensitive. The university itself and their CMP says Mauna Kea is probably one of the most significant cultural and astronomical sites in the world. And they also admit in many places that the Mauna Kea Science Reserve contains both culturally and environmentally sensitive areas. And I've uh, put forth some of these areas in our written testimony. Now, the university recognizes it is clear that to many Hawaiians, Mauna Kea is more than a mountain. It is the embodiment of the Hawaiian people. And Syria is also very sensitive and important to Mr. Flores. He has previously been qualified as an expert to cultural practices related to Mauna Kea, 
in the area of Hawaiian cultural traditions through his knowledge, skill, and experience. And finally, as to this 343 issue, federal case law says that a renewal of a project or an action must be considered as if it was brand new, not a continued use. So the university cannot say, well, if this is just, you know, yes, it's a lease, but we've had this lease for 45 years. No, under federal case law, you must act as if this was a brand new lease. So for those reasons, uh, this, these proposed lease actions do not fit into one of the specified exemptions. And finally, I just wanted to make a brief comment on um, implications of the Ceded Lands Trust, and I'll defer to the Office of Hawaiian Affairs and other testifiers to expand on this issue. But it's clear uh, from the staff submittal, these are ceded trust lands. And they must be held by the state of Hawaii uh, as public trust for Native Hawaiians and the general public. Now, UH has pointed out that while in their, in their view, the lease allows them to extract more revenue or more lease rent from their subleases. But if we look at the actual lease terms, we see a couple things. One, they are paying nothing to the Board of Land and Natural Resources. Um, that would be in violation of their trust, of the state's trust duties to be impartial among all beneficiaries. You see, you cannot allow education to trump the interests of the public and Native Hawaiians. They must be both treated together um, in their best interest. And not charging any lease rent, well, that may benefit the university, it does not benefit Native Hawaiians who would receive 20% of those funds from OHA. Second, even if the lease does allow the university to charge an increased amount of lease rent for their subleases, there is nothing in the lease terms that require them to do so, nor does it require fair market value. Um, and, and of course, we have this question on how do you value uh, telescope time? Why? Well, I, I think it would be simple. There needs to be accounting. How much has this telescope time been rented for on the on the open market? Um, for, the, for these and other reasons, on behalf of Mr. Flores, we would like to request a contested case hearing and um, I'd briefly I'd like to, if you would so allow, have Mr. Flores make. Uh, a brief personal statement. <coughs> I'm advised not to speak too much on the legal aspects, but I just want to ask some poignant questions. That the subleases, my understanding, are co terminus with the general lease. If the general lease ends, which is being requested, then so do the subleases end. Wouldn't it be appropriate then to revisit and renegotiate the subleases and instead of allowing them to continue to 2033? What's wrong with that picture? If the lease, the lease, existing lease ends, so does it, the subleases. Then it's subjected to paying fair market value rent for these new subleases. Not waiting to 2033, but now. Secondly, they're also confined to the rules and regulations of the decommissioning plan. If you look at the decommissioning plan which you folks approved, there are certain regulations when a new lease comes into existence, sub-lease, there, there are certain requirements for that. That is not being addressed in this, in this, in this proposed new leases. And with that aside, this the, the Mauna, Mauna Awa Ke, the mountain of sky Father. The mountain is a sacred people to all of us. And that's just, that's not Kanaka, but to all of us. It's a sacred people. And for 45 years, it's been allowed to be desecrated and destroyed. How did that occur? With the existing lease of 40, that's in existence in 1968, that is allowed to occur. How did it allow to occur to become substantial, adverse, and significant impacts? How did it happen? 45 years. Nobody can explain it. Every board action that has taken place since then to, to, up until this time has allowed that to happen. And in the record, and in, they want to declare that it's not going to be this new proposed lease is going to be a minimal impact. No, 45 years have already shown what has happened. So I'm saying, saying, this must be awakened what's happening at this moment. 
What is truth and what is untruth? Mauna Wakir is a sacred people. And it's a sacred people please treat it as such. And from the Mauna to here, we just bring our aloha from Hoko Kiawe, from Mauna Wakir, to all of you who sit in position to make an important decision for our people. Mahalo, this time, aloha no of the general lease for UHF Wamakil. And in the foundation that we're going to lay, it's important that we provide information of correct terminology because I am a Hawaiian Kingdom subject and I am finally learning my political genealogy as to what happened. There was never a treaty of annexation. And so now we need to correct some terminology. First off, ceded lands. Ceded lands continues to perpetuate the lie of what actually took place. Because when we take a look at what sessions is, when you look at sessions, it means that you have a country that legally transferred itself over to another country. There has to be a treaty of annexation that took place. So what happened to the Hawaiian Kingdom? Was there a treaty of annexation that took place that legally transferred itself over to the United States? That never happened. There were two attempts that were made in 1893 and the second attempt in 1897. Both attempts failed. Then in 1898, the United States Congress passed a resolution that said we are going to take the Hawaiian Kingdom. It was a congressional resolution taking the Hawaiian Kingdom, and that is not a treaty of annexation. That law can only apply within the territorial limitations of the United States. They cannot apply in a foreign country of the Hawaiian Kingdom. From that point on, the life took place from 1894. There was never a treaty of annexation here in Hawaii. The cover-up took place all the way up to today, 2013. And when I hear people say that ceded lands, ceded lands, especially when the Office of Hawaiian, Def Hawaiian, Office of Hawaiian Despair talks about it, it's very, very discouraging because they themselves should be the ones to know. And when you have the governor talk about ceded lands, he should know, because it never happened. These are crown lands. 
and you as board members should be referring properly to these lands. So the lands up at Mama Kim should be referred to as crop lands properly. So let's talk about those, those lands. Because of there's no treaty of annexation, what that means is that the United States has no jurisdiction here in Hawaii. Even the U.S. Pacific Commander and their lawyers admit that there was never ever a treaty of annexation. There were two executive agreements by Queen Lidio Kalani and President Cleveland of which she assigned her executive position to President Cleveland. President Cleveland accepted it and he also said that he would restore the Hawaii Kingdom government. Those executive agreements apply today. So the proxy queen of the Hawaiian Kingdom is Barack Obama. His responsibility is to enforce Hawaiian Kingdom constitutional law and his responsibility is to restore the Hawaiian Kingdom government which puts you as board members responsible to enforce Hawaiian Kingdom law when you make determinations into these kinds of leases if that you are responsible for that and you're supposed to be using Hawaiian Kingdom law when you make these, these determinations because if you do not and you're using U.S. laws which includes state laws and HRS laws you can now be charged with a war crime because in 1959 when the Statehood Act came along that was a war crime we are now laying the foundation to present this information to you because it is very important that in this foundation, in further decisions from this point on, and I was advised by our attorney, Dexter Kayama, that in all past decisions, you could not be hit with war crimes. But from this point on, because we are now laying this foundation, you can now be charged with war crimes because we have now laid the foundation. And you cannot say you did not know. I have provided this information to you. You have now got it on your table. And it is now your responsibility to research it. Because we are opposed to the lease that is now before you up in Mauna Kea. Nancy Monroe will further be able to provide more information as to why under the Geneva Conventions and the United States Constitutional Law, you guys have got to follow this. So, can, you say, can you summarize that because you represent all of this? No, it's short. Hang on. We're going to, not today, but we're going to hand off to our attorneys, right? Who's supposed to represent us. As you said, now that you provide us with the information, you yes. have to do the analysis. That's not part of the, it is, but it's not part of the process that we do. Now. We have, have to have them do that. Actually, just a few words, because I don't want to reiterate what's already been submitted in the written testimony. Of course, the legal position of gentlemen is that, of course, the United States continues the usurpation of illegal occupation. Um, the position, really, your um, um, Mr. Ida and board members, is that you temporarily are responsible for the management of these land areas. And I say temporarily because um, I, I wish to inform you that as of August of 2012, a complaint calling for the end of the prolonged occupation was filed with the United Nations General Assembly. That complaint was received an acknowledgement of that complaint. Just for your information, um, those kinds of complaints can only be acknowledged and received if you are a state that recognizes the United state. Um, in addition, um, a complaint was filed with the International Court of Justice uh, a month ago. Um, that also has been acknowledged and the um, process is moving forward, calling for some preliminary measures, including <coughs> countries that have acceded to the jurisdiction immediately to stop um, all further treaties with the United States concerning any territory with Hawaii. 
um, to stop um, any engagement as far as political, social, economic, or military uh, with the United States concerning the territory of Hawaii. The point is, um, ladies and gentlemen, it has been 120 years since the illegal overthrow and 115 years since the illegal occupation. And those matters are now being addressed in the international community. I believe a resolution to those issues will be forthcoming within the near future. So it is my request, respectfully, and I think listening to some of the questions that the board members did today, did ask today, I do believe you are taking some responsible steps as towards what should be the proper stewardship for Mauna Kea. Um, presently, though, as proposed, the uh, least as proposed, it is the estimation, my estimation, that that still falls short. And um, acceptance of the proposed lease in its current form um, would, um, in my estimation, uh, violate uh, your obligations. Because your obligations as a temporary one is not only to the state of Hawaii or to the people here in the state of Hawaii, but you do have a, an obligation to the kingdom of Hawaii. So your stewardship or the, or the decisions that this, that this board makes, which impacts property that properly belongs to the kingdom of Hawaii, crown and government lands, um, of course, the record itself is being made in this team. Um, so uh, just respectfully ask that you take that into consideration. Um, we would oppose the, the current lease in this form. Also, uh, in addition to that, the countries that do have telescopes up at Mauna Kea, they will be affected by this as to what is taking place right now currently at the Hague. Nancy Lindro, and I'm also with Kanaka Council, Moko Kiyabi, and uh, I know I am part of the illegal occupation. I came here to go to the university. I can't say I'm a Hawaiian Kingdom subject, but I want to be in line the first day I can take the oath. And uh, some just legal factual information, the state of Hawaii, nor this board, has legal title to the land on Mauna Kea and has no legal authority to grant them. The United States is a high contracting party to the Geneva Conventions, and thus is in violation of its own criminal code, which requires that the laws agreed to in the 1949 Geneva Convention for be written into U.S. constitutional law under U.S. Code, Title 18, Section 2441, the War Crimes Act, which directly incorporates several provisions of international treaties governing the laws of war into the U.S. Federal Criminal Code. And our conflict is not a requisite of application of war crimes when a state, meaning a country, is under military occupation, which Hawaii is. The Kingdom of Hawaii has been under military occupation by the United States of America in violation of neutrality treaties since August 12, 1898, during the Spanish-American War. And according to U.S. Field Manual 27-10, Chapter 6, Item 358, Occupation Does Not Transfer Sovereignty. Thus, the sovereignty of the Hawaiian Kingdom remains intact. The United States has committed a grave breach of the Geneva Convention 1949 <coughs> under U.S. Field Manual 27-10, Chapter 10, Item 502, by extensive destruction and appropriation of property not justified by military necessity and carried out unlawfully and wantonly in allowing construction of roads, facilities, and telescopes at Mauna Kea. I am opposed to the proposed mutual cancellation of the general lease and issuance of a new direct lease to UH for the Mauna Kea Science Reserve and Hale Pohaku mid-level facilities. The entire existing general lease must be canceled completely to halt any further appropriation of property in violation of both U.S. law and international law. For the decisions made by this board and its members to the lease extension at Mauna Kea will be considered another commission of a war crime and will be reported to the International Criminal Court for investigation and prosecution. Please take care that you are not subject to international arrest when you make your decisions. I thank you. I just in case you have any questions about the reason for
Attorney General's office as of last year, so much of this information is already transmitted to the Attorney General's office through the special
uh, the major purpose of conservation is to protect and conserve the lands under HRS 183C and other statute. Um, that's the first and foremost use. So we have an obligation to make that use. And the beneficiaries of, of those lands also happen to be the Native Hawaiians and the general public. And so the purpose of those lands are for the betterment of the condition of Native Hawaiians and for the general public. That's above and beyond any sub-use. Astronomy is, is only a sub-use. And as a sub-use, that is a secondary purpose. That comes after all the other purposes. And I know that sub-use was designated sub-use in the 1980s, but it was designated conservation in 1961 and it's never changed. And that's your first and foremost obligation is to protect those lands in the spirit in which the, the law was written to do. So that's another major important thing. Um, we are completely against any kind of exemption from environmental review in any way, shape, or form. And you know, the short order reason for that is that Mauna Kea sits over six aquifers <coughs> that provide all of the drinking water for Hawaii Island. And just based on that knowledge, we should have environmental review at a minimum. And in fact, all of the environmental review in the past, including the NASA environmental impact statement, the TMT, have, and BLNR itself, and the former chair has admitted all of that the impact is significant, adverse, and substantial to the cultural and natural resources. Not to the astronomy, but to the cultural and natural resources. And that's the reason why Mauna Kea is protected as it is. So we already know, and it's already admitted, that there's negative impact. And so I can just imagine another 65 years. Um, the last point, or second to the last point, is rent. Um, we've been on about this for years. Um, we wrote it to the LMR in our first temple report in 2001 that the rent was due. And the statutes are 171 17 and 18. And it's fair market lease rent. It's not what the university decides they want to pay. It's fair market. And there's a way to assess it. And all you guys need to do is follow that. And in, in our report, we actually designated money to be given to PLNR. And we designated, we allocated all of it. In an ideal world, we thought this is what should happen. And so, um, we might go back to that should be in the record. <laughs> um, <coughs> I mean, I think that the foreign governments should pay rent because it's the right thing to do. And I think actually many of them would be willing to, but the university holds them hostage. And so if I were you, I would talk to them directly. Um, because I would agree and concur with what was previously said by Native Hawaiian New York that the, that's, it's a requirement. It has to be given and it should benefit the state also. So that's the second part. Um, comprehensive management plan and also correcting the record. I want to be clear that there's a couple fallacies that keep getting perpetuated in all of the documentation. And the first one is that Act 132 gives them control over UH management areas and astronomy precinct. I will say yes to that, but it does not give them control over the conservation district. That's your folks jurisdiction. And Act 132 ne never changed um, the prevailing laws, land use laws of the state. It didn't change 171, it did not change uh, 183C, nor did it change 205. These are the laws that you may not, not abide by. <laughs> These are specific laws. And so while it's true that one act 
So Act 132 did do some things, including designate that they can charge rent and put it in their own, own um, fund that they create. That doesn't mean that you folks don't have to also collect the rent under 171. You folks can, and I think you should, because our state needs it. And I definitely think uh, OHA understands this, and, and OHA should get some too. And um, the whole state should get it. So we are opposed to the whole submittal of the, uh, whatever, the agenda item P5. Um, I just want to say that for the record. We also want to say that um, many of the Mama Kipley members are of 50% blood, and including Paul Nevis and Kinoki, his son Kinoki. And we do uh, concur with or enjoin OHA's comments, as well as the Native Hawaiian Legal Corp at this time. And we, if you proceed ahead, we would like it on the record that we call for a contested case hearing um, regarding this. And we would call for it in the right spirit of contested case hearing, that all actions stop until the standing is decided of the parties. And that also that the contested case become a venue where we can provide serious discussion to help the WLNR make an informed decision. And um, with that, I think I finished everything. Oh, why? There's one more correct in the Smithsonian. You asked what the percentage of rent or time in the of rent was, and they said. For 10 to 15 percent. That's true, but Smithsonian is actually 20 percent. So I just want to make that. So, mahalo. Before you go ahead. Oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah. um, you said that uh, since 2001, um, you've argued about the um, the fact that the gratis lease rent is unreasonable. Yeah. Right. Um, I would have thought that maybe you've taken the time to assess what the fair market lease rent value might be. Okay. At first, to be honest, <laughs> at first we thought we had a creative idea, and that was, I was a former telescope system specialist, and one of the problems that we had on our telescope was that the University of Astronomers didn't always come out to do a observing. So at that time, we thought, well, why don't we use the unused time, sell it on the open market for fair market value, and then create a trust? That was our original idea. It was just because pragmatically, IFA couldn't always send their people out, and our telescopes used to sit dormant for a long time. <clears throat> they changed how it was done so that we could use the time for other observing activity. But at that time, that's what we thought, so we were looking at how much is a nightly cost. But unfortunately, even in that report, I think it's not enough because the nightly costs are only uh, for operating. So um, I think it needs to be based on how much someone, you know, how much would it be sold on the market? And that was only an estimation. So we came up with something like $15 million when we total just. Sorry, one five million? Uh, yeah, five zero. Five zero million. Yeah, just as a as a percentage of the total time sold on the market and then put in some kind of fund. And that was but that was adding up all thirty six nights, because on average telescopes get thirty six nights um, they give to the university, right? And so they actually the governments, like the British government, has to pay that um, that operating cost for the university to give them what they can do. So if they were to do it on the market, they would sell it for these things. But I think in 171, they tell you that some kind of an assessor needs to do it. And an appraisal. An appraisal, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think, so we were kind of corrected by that. But we were coming, trying to come up with a, you know, if no one's going to use the time, hey, sell it and give it back to the state <coughs> and the people. Follow-up question to that. Follow-up question. Yeah. At the time that you worked there, were any of these um, foreign companies that were businesses selling time to the Um Well, how it's done is they've submitted proposals. The proposals get approved.
approve. They also submit grants to help pay for those approval. So it's kind of in their hand. Um, but how much a, an observatory actually costs to operate, you know, pay all the employees, cost of lighting, you know, electricity, and all of that is the operating. And I mean, super really, for example, way back then, operating cost was $300 million. That's a lot. You know, you have to pay for a lot of things. But that isn't, you know, I mean, the state can choose to decide what the rent is, too. And so, you know. But super really doesn't subcontracting. No, I don't think so. Since since the, the Yale has bought time for $12 million for a certain amount of nights, um, and I think there's been another one, but honestly, I'm sorry, I can't remember. But, uh, yeah, at least Yale did for that. And that was for 12 nights or something like that. Uh, but don't quote me on it. I can't remember <laughs> off the top of my head. Approximately. Yeah. Another lots of them. Yeah, yeah. Further questions? For the record, we lost the board member. How long do we have before we lose our board? Another hour. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> 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 concern is that there's a lot of vocal individuals in our community who want to ban astronomy from monitoring. And it so sometimes sounds as though they represent the opinions of all or most of the native people. And this is not true. What about the Hawaiians like myself and others that I know support the responsible use of monitoring for astronomy assignments? I chose to express my opinions um, here today. 
disinformation run rapid out in our community. The CMP is in effect. Along with the South Plains, addressing the cultural resources, natural resources, public access, and the decommissioning of the older uh, health school. The burial treatment plan, we have our Kahukumana Council, who monitors activities and policies on, on, on our own. Invasive species policies and inspections. Royalties paid to all. UH is not perfect, but we strive. Hawaiians use monarchy for various purposes, from the practical to the spiritual, including the study of the night skies or wind and cloud formation during the day. It is no wonder that today Mauna Kea has established a reputation as being the best location in the world um, for mankind to conduct it. And this is keeping with the traditional use of the mountain. This brings great honor to Hawaii and offers educational, economic, and career opportunities for our local residents. For example, my cousin, he just getting ready to retire after serving 30 years working for uh, observatories on the mountain. What an opportunity he had to be able to provide and raise his family by working in the astronomy industry. Why does their voice not come? And there are other many locals who work up there on, on the summit. Contrary to the opinions expressed by some, this is not in all or nothing. Us versus them, or either or option. Science and culture can coexist on the summit. The Mauna is strong. University is achieving this goal of respectfully accommodating all the people who wish to access the special gifts that Mauna Kea offers. Cultural practitioners can travel to the summit, consulted on management issues, and under the CMP, astronomy facilities must follow strict protocols in order to continue operations on the moon. What, what I have seen is that they love and respect the mountain just as much as us and in their own way. All of us who choose to reside on the island of Hawaii make the slopes of Mauna Kea our home. The whole island is safe. Not only just part of Hawaii, the whole island is safe. From Hilo to Waikoloa, Kau to Kohala, development and technology continues. No matter what happens, it will continue. There are many positive outcomes that can come out of the spirit of cooperation. An example is what we're facing now with Lake Waiau. We have some pipes in there stuck in there. The goal is, is the same. We're trying to remove that, that pipes in a pono way. Together and we brainstorm this issue working for the goal of removing these pipes. You know, this is some of the examples that we're trying to work together with the community and cultural practitioners to best achieve this goal. The best management practices resulted in the removal of the vacant bulk of the endangered species list. Tons of trash that our rangers remove each year, 24-7 protection. It's just some of the reasons why I support the extension and the new lease to the UH. This is the best way to establish a cooperative and positive future. UH will continue to make corrections as we move forward. The UH will continue to be the best man of the moment. For this reason, allow the UH to malam the moment. Fulfill its obligations and commitment to make the astronomy industry viable and a good name. Any questions? Yeah, you mentioned the uh, you mentioned Waiyo, and recently I saw some pretty troubling things, images of the water in, in Waiyo. Um, were you there?
there recently, and what's what's going on there right now with the water level? It's a low, low time. Really low. Has it ever been that low before? No, probably it's in the yeah. lowest in and that's why the pipes now sticking up, and we are concerned with the ice so on. And then we're trying to get the historical data on that why the pipes is there in the first place. You don't have time to find a record. It's still in our we all know, but we're trying to work and get that eyesore. You know? But yeah, some problem. It's part of global warming. We're not having the snow we need to ensure the levels to be maintained. Serious for us. Thank you so much. is not in the Regarding the direct action that we're speaking about now that is on your, your table, um, which is the a, extension of the lease, the, the mutual uh, discharge of the current lease, which ends in 2033, uh, to extend it up to another 65 years. I believe that goes up to 80 or something like that. I, I don't, you can't do the math right off the top. Um, so one of, one of the things I wanted to be able to say here is that because their lease does not and until 2033, there is absolutely no need for this fast track. Unless, of course, we're talking about providing the incentive or the fauna for a 30 millimeter telescope, which is, again, this is, this is very troubling because this is 5 f lens. This is seeded lens. Um, in the current, current uh, reality that we're living in, it is considered seeded lens. 
And there are very specific uses for those funds for that for that land to be protected. And so um, the subleasing out to private entities or multinational <coughs> or other countries is not consistent with the, the, the land use as described under the 5F Laws of the Admissions Act. Um, that being said, um, it, it, it's really, it's, it's, it, it just, it befuddles me that this information having to do with this hearing was only a week ago. Okay? Um, I don't know how I keep falling out of these loops, but I keep getting knocked off all these mailing lists and information lists. I've been on, I've been talking about this for quite a long time now. As you may know or may not know, my father used to work for the DLNR. Uh, in fact, he used to work at Puahua, uh, which is now referred to as Monica State Park. Uh, we were the ones who raised the uh, mouflon sheep, as well as the nene. I was taken over the wall of life. We also made all the hunters' cabins going around the mountain. I believe there's six, uh, starting from Pumaa, uh, or the Pumaili. I can't tell you off the top of my head, I was going to be surprised myself that I actually remember the actual names for each one of them, but my father was the one who drove the bulldozers to make those houses. Half my childhood was spent making those houses. And and um, and uh, working out of Puapala, which is down in Monica State Park, but in the back is where the, the deal and used to do their stuff. And so I have a very deep connection with Monica. Um, again, uh, it, it seems to escape the reality that this of uh, this the religious significance of Monica. And I bring this to your attention because this is a First Amendment issue also. It is not just a fight of uh, uh, a fight of thing. Although you are charged specifically for the for the uh, protection and proper use of fighter guns as described in the five clause of the admission law. Um, you are also mandated by Article 12, Section 7, as a result of the 1976 Cost Convention, to protect and to preserve and to promote the interests of the land people. Um, and again, as I explained to you earlier, um, I am Hawaiian. I am not the Hawaiian that is described in the Admissions Act regarding Hawaiian homes having a 50% of funding. And that is a very controversial area, and I can actually give you a whole history of why that is illegal, but that is not directly related to this, this stuff as we're speaking about. Um, so, first of all, I would like to say I'm, I'm totally against all three phases of this, um, these three leases. Um, okay, so we've already talked about the summit. There is an obligation that is mandated that you are not necessary stepping to the plate to actualize and make sure that it, it uh, is properly taken care of from your um, fiduciary side. Um, that being said, and, and I concur with, with uh, um, just about every comment that's been made about the sickness of the loan. But getting on to the issue at hand, the second issue involved is the, the lease at Hollywood Walker. Um, now, this is becoming a very, very, very interesting and controversial thing because, and well, let's play your folks' own probably mistake of releasing this information to you. But that is also the critical habitat. This is under the Environment of the Endangered Species Act. It is critical habitat. And, um, and although forestry and wildlife has a certain say in this, if they are not able to to complete the fiduciary responsibilities to protect the, 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 the endangered uh, critical habitat, then it would have to go to a further, to a further case. And Bill, you and I both know that I've been very consistent about this, um, even, even dealing with the HAMP program with the military and talking about the critical habitat. And so in, in, in fair play, it would be very improper for you to say that we cannot have sheep and that you can do arrow shooting of the sheep in a critical habitat and then tell me that it's okay to have 
concession stands in a critical habitat, of which you folks are getting money. This is just, this is absurdity. And so I bring this to your attention because it is a very contentious area. Um, um, and I bring this to your attention, if you would, we've already talked about uh, but what has not been brought to your attention is not the IA versus the And I, I implore you to take the time to really understand the significance of abandoning the state's fiduciary responsibilities for these five lands. There are serious consequences. It's already been adjudicated in the federal courts. So I bring it to your attention now because I believe it has to be re-educated and you folks lose. It could be trouble damages. And so there's a liability factor involved here. Um, where the, the University of Hawaii contends that it, um, it has to deal with this this uh, public uh, and um, tourist type operation. Again, from my standpoint, this is absurd. You shouldn't even be up there. Religiously, you should not even be up there, period. Nobody should be up there. In the ancient days, that was reserved for the priests and very high chiefs, period. And there were serious ramifications. As a matter of fact, there was only one ramification. And that was death, the breaking of the couple system. Now, I do realize that we're living in a different time period, and we're living under different circumstances, but it is still, you still must take in consideration what I'm bringing to your attention from the First Amendment side, as well as your fiduciary responsibilities under the Seed of Lands Trust. Um, again, out of fair play, you cannot tell me that you have a right to shoot uh, our game animals that we actually, in, in joint with the state, raise a whole monkey in the back of the monkey uh, state park. Um, and tell me that you can do that and take the game off the mountain and at the same time tell me that it's okay to have Halipuhaku uh, at the mid level, which is in the critical habitat of Toledo Burke. And so, and thirdly, for the um, for the, the power companies, the, the lease for the extension of the power, that of course goes con coincides with the existence of the council. Um, and so, what I'm what, what I'm trying to uh, 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 express here is that it is ridiculous to think that you have to be on a fast track if you have 20 years already existing on the list, on the lease. And so. To say that we're going to go and we're going to rush this thing through within a month time, <clears throat> all your documentations and your consultations happened all within the last month. And so you have not given the public fair, fair and adequate time to assess what you have been expressing or to be able to co uh, counter or even to have public hearings. You have not even taken the time to bring up have a public hearing on the big island where all this is taking place. We've had to come down here. I'm on social security, but this is half my salary, half my income to come here. I don't expect you to feel sorry for me, you know, but it is reality. And so I, I do uh, for you to not take the fast track, take the time to do due diligence because that will be reflected in a, in a, in a court. Again, I, I, I uh, express that you should very much take a look at the Nafei versus Wilson case. Wilson, of course, was a chairman of the DMR at the time. It was also under Ono and Patty. So <coughs> there are severe ramifications for failure to make um, sure responsibilities. And thank you very much for your time. <coughs> My name is Mwani Ke Awa Akaka. First of all, I think that there should be a, a declaration that this hearing is not in conformance with the um, rules. <coughs> there has been no adequate uh, publication of notice uh, relating to this meeting, not to mention that these are conservation lands and there's been 20 days notice. Uh, the other night, uh, I was at a hearing and a local over in Hilo and a local uh, reporter 
had asked me what I thought. This is the first time I heard that there was going to be this uh, this hearing today uh, on the uh, uh, on the expansion of the lease. Um, this was on Tuesday night. Uh, I hadn't seen anything in the newspaper about it, and not until Wednesday was there something. Was there an article in the the Tribune Herald? So uh, uh, again, uh, and, that, and not to mention that uh, since it's conservation land, there should have been a hearing over on the Big Island. Uh, you know, it's it's like you're trying to pull a, a fast move on the people. Um, Mount Ikea is our sacred mountain is on the Big Island of Hawaii. And yet, uh, the only hearing that we hear about is here, uh, in, on Oahu. Uh, you should definitely have a hearing on the Big Island. Uh, in fact, um, uh, Teresa Donham, who's with uh, uh, one of the archaeologists from, from your division, had said that there should be more hearings, uh, and there should be definitely be uh, hearings on the Big Island, and also points out the significant damage culturally uh, environmentally and otherwise that will be done uh, to, uh, to Mount Nikea as a result of, of this expansion. Um, fair market value. You know, it's, it's not a dollar a year. Um, our state is broke. Yet the uh, telescopes can make, uh, in some instances, over a hundred thousand dollars in one night uh, for for viewing. Um, you know that's you know that's that's absurd. It's rent free, um, and we as individuals have to pay rent or a mortgage for our homes. Uh, but these foreign countries uh, pay no rent. Uh, you know, the a, a dollar a year is is really disgusting, and. Um, And yet now they want to add 45 more years to, to the lease. <coughs> we need um, an adequate environmental review, um, and um, there should be no exemptions uh, relating to new construction. Um, Mr. Straney from the University of Hawaii uh, has mentioned that the university isn't proposing any new construction right now. You know, he's not saying tomorrow we may have new construction, but right now. You know, these, uh, these uh, so-called academics, uh, and I have a great deal of respect for a, uni for a university, but, you know, they think we're dumb. You know, it's uh, right now we don't have any plans for expansion, but that doesn't mean they're not going to be doing it tomorrow. Um, they also say, um, he also said that uh, no other new uses of Mauna Kea beyond 2043 uh, 20, are foreseeable at this time. Are foreseeable at this time. You know, people think we're dumb. Uh, yeah, are foreseeable at this time, but maybe two weeks from now it'll be a different situation. You know, uh, uh, and you know, to hear the university uh, uh, talking about uh, acting as though they own the mountain, you know, bad enough. The DLNR for decades, and the court said this, were allowing the university to be negligent, to do harmful things to that mauna, our sacred mauna. And the DLNR sat back and allowed the university to make any kind, including polluting the area. But that was okay. You know, even hearing uh, the, this, this woman talk now, you know, they, they talk as though they own that mountain. How the hell did you guys give them that mountain? That mountain belongs to our people. You know, it doesn't belong to the university, as much respect as I have for the university system. But, you know, it's, it's, it's deplorable. You know, they have control of that mountain. DLNR has given it to them. DLNR allowed them to be negligent for decades. The courts have said that. But, like, you know, DLNR goes ahead and rubber stamps everything the university wants to do. You know, that's not... Uh, you know, there I mentioned earlier about a fiduciary responsibility that you board members have to our aina, to our ceded lands, left to us by our ancestors, lands that we have not given up title to. And regardless of what Mr. Ishibashi, who heads the union, you know, unions that want more jobs, but they don't care about protecting the aina. You know, uh, regardless of what they say, he says about the whole island being sacred, 
Well, Mount Nikea is especially sacred, and I don't see any of you public officials taking care of her. You know, it's, uh, it's a sad, sad situation. We need adequate environmental review, and there should be no exemptions. Um, uh, there should be no new, uh, they say there will be no new construction. Um, but, um, you know, as I pointed out, no new, uh, no new construction today, but tomorrow is, is another day. Um, DLNR, as I stated, has a fiduciary responsibility to protect these ceded lands for we Native Hawaiians and the general public. DLNR has a responsibility. DLNR does not have the responsibility to rubber stamp everything the university wants to do, as you have been doing. You know, this whole situation, as has been mentioned, is being rushed through. And, uh, you know, it's not Pono. Somebody has to watch out for our Aina, and that's your responsibility, DLNR. Instead, you just let the developers do whatever it is they make any kind, whatever it is they want to do. You know, enough is enough. I'm not necessarily against astronomy or what they've done thus far, but enough is enough. And it's about time that they were held responsible, and it's about time that this lease, 20 more years we have, what's the rush? You know, I'm sick and tired of them feeling and acting as though they own our mountain and even these fake bodies that they set up. A lot of them are Shabai rubber stamp brigades. And, you know, we deserve better. The people of Hawaii deserve better. We Native Hawaiians deserve better. And our sacred mauna deserves better. Mahalo. Thank you. Aloha, my name is Michael Kumukau Ali. I'm a Papa Kilo Hoku. Um, I am in opposition to the lease. I would do, a, for the record, a contested case hearing. Entered into Exhibit A is um, the City Council recognition as Papa Kilo Hoku um, for the December 8, 2012. I put that in uh, evidence. Uh, also, the City Council of, of Honolulu, May 9, 2012, again, Papa Kilo Hoku, a branch of the government, recognizing, fact-checking, corporate council, going through the whole position, uh, Hannah Home Magazine, Anthony Alto wrote it. He had to fact check, fact check. Papa Kilo Hoku here. They say that we don't exist as a lie. We do exist. And I'm here to say we're here and we're claiming what the damage is because nobody's put it in the box. Here, we're putting in the box for Exhibit A, the sacred sites at Lake Waiau that have been destroyed and consistently are being stepped on, not put aside. Um, ropes to, to keep them from these sacred sites, all these things, I would like your staff to Xerox them as um, cause of standing of eminent harm, that is continuation. My TX copyrights on the Limu that I was taught by my auntie, who was taught by Lilio Kalani from 1905 to 1911, Auntie Alice Bolokai. My deposition of being a Papaki Lohoku under penalty of perjury, outlining who my teachers were, sourcing them back. Newspaper articles in 2008 for the veracity of my statements and claims as a kahuna of Limu in the, at that time, Star Bulletin. Um, the sacred water places defined up at um, Mauna Kea. Yeah, well, this is, well, this is, okay. But as part of my testimony, nobody else was voideered in the sense of saying, no, you cannot do it your way. Every time I come up here, I run into all kinds of, I'm expressing it my way, uncle does, auntie does, but I'm not allowed to do it. Interesting, the only living Papa Kilo Hoku that's not allowed to say cause of standing of continued eminent harm under these guys for years, and I'm making my case, but oh, let's not go that way. Interesting, my family is both lineal for Pu'upoleau and uh, Pu'ulilinoi. Where did we come from? 13 BC, that Akua Noho Hoku family that, is, that possesses Wakea and Papa came through this hole. Okay? This I want you to, um, this is the Po Ele Ele over um, Pu'ua Veo Veo on Mauna Loa. That's where they came from, from the Cygnus Nebula, which is the head 
of Haomea, which is in our stories, that that's where her children came from. So I'm making the case, 13,000 years ago, the lineal receptacles of Kumulipo, chant 8, chant 7, that we hold the body of our Hokuakua, are standing up, and I'm here in proxy for them, saying we are here, we've always been here. The fact that you guys broke protocol when uh, they announced us to come out during the Hoku, um, during the uh, Hokulea stuff is was all bad protocol, and my teachers were appalled at what happened there. So again, these are more maps and stuff of where the sacred sites in the entire mountain are. Because you guys ask for finding a fact under the Western lens, we come and we show it to you, and oh, don't do it. We don't want you to talk about that stuff. Okay. The bottom line is, where is the finding of fact the cause of standing of eminent harm? Lake Waiau, the different limus that are there. Um, where does it come from? The four springs of Pu'upoleahu. At Lake Waiau, there's an entrance to Pu'upoleahu for our family, Ivikupuna. On the south side up on the mountain, there's another entrance buried by rocks to Pu'upoleahu. All of those pu'us are upside down water collection devices for the Pohoehoe lava tubes. They have Ivikupuna Ka'ai in there that are our family, that we are here to claim as what is right, that you ask causes, standing of eminent harm, we don't exist, I'm here, and I'm putting it all on the table, says, damn wrong, we're here. And the bottom line is where that continues, I'm trying to point it out specifically. I want to ask you a specific question. Yes. To help us understand that. So, is any of the activity in the Illinois has approved in the past, or the University of Hawaii has approved in the past, are you saying that we're directly responsible for Lake Wael drying up? And Not the drying up, because the four springs are the so permafrost. What damage does Lake Wael? The damage is you allow everybody to go walking through to these sacred sites, which I identify where they're sacred. They should be roped off. You know, in um, Kona Village, where they had, when it used to be a Kona Village before the tidal wave, I'm trying to make a point, and I'm not off topic. They built a boardwalk, like you do for the hot springs, so you don't damage the sites. Hello, that's the national park where they have all the hot springs. They build boardwalks so you don't damage the site. Same thing with um, <coughs> uh, Kona Village, the turtle, the Honu um, petroglyphs. So someone walking up to the edge of the Lake Oil, yes. how high or how yes. is, that is damage? Yes, because you, you see me, here. Can you tell me how that is damage? Okay, sure. I'll, I'll tell you how. I have to get my glasses on. Okay, here, identify where the Ava of, of offering sacrifices are at the edge of Lake Waiau. I show you where the Kua and Hina stone is on site um, FE26. I show you where the birthplaces are, where the Po realm is, where the memorial offering mound is, where we do it for the spirits of the dead. I put that out. The boundary stones for the sacrifice for the protection of the Ali'i sons. I put it um, where the uh, rocks are constituting the Papakiwa Poku dealing with um, uh, Taurus, which is very important for us, because that's Kiaka Hulilani, during the time of the Makihiki. So all of these sites that are little mounds of rocks that people walk all over, are sacred sites for us. I, place, I put the hiding place for the ambush, where the cave is, for the soldiers, the place for the genealogical chance to be taken, the place to have the Ava drinking ceremony for the Olof, the uh, uh, the Lua warriors around the site, these are all sacred, not identified sites by cultural practitioner for generational knowledge. And I'm putting it down on the table saying it's in the box, you got to consider it, it's on the table. And that's the cause of standing of eminent harm to answer your question specifically under rules of evidence and under, um, you know, finding a fact. And I've had to become a freaking attorney I'm in my own contested case with the Papipi, I mean the, the Joseco Marina in the uh, circuit court, uh, not the circuit court, but the intermediate court of appeals. So I've had to become an attorney as well as a Papakilo Hoku. So I'm trying to give you the stuff you're asking for that has the veracity of finding a fact. So, so you're saying that someone who is not a trained Hoku standing next to one of the sites that you say is sacred yes. is that Yes, yes, because they're also walking and hitting the stones. When they step on the mounds and they crumple it up, they're doing cumulative damage. 45 years of cumulative damage of not roping this off and not identifying it. That's what I think. Okay, done.
Okay, and that's not all. We Papakilo Hokus use a Papakilo Hoku stone that's about this, it looks like a hockey puck. When you put it in my hand, that sucker is going to pulse. I put it in front of you, it'll pulse like your pulse. If it pulses fast, you're lying. If it pulses slow, you're not. I need that to do the Waihaka ceremony, the Lamapuli Olelo, the Mavaivai ceremony, um, the Kapu Kapu ceremony. What is in the box? I'm just putting it in. I'll put the chance. I'll put everything else you want in there. This has formerly been kapu, but because if we don't put the stuff, the hidden treasures in, you claim we're all dead. It don't exist. I know 3,000 Hawaiian stars, 261 Hawaiian constellations, and all the stories. I can go three. I can go eight hours, three days in court to prove how Emerson, Emery, Maud McEverson, 1943, how this fits into the whole thing. This is our secret couple in the box stuff that we have to put out because under rules of evidence of the Western lens, you demand it. So we're getting it out. We're not dead. Despite what the, the Hukulea people keep on saying. I can prove them wrong, wrong, wrong. By the way, I have a student, a 20-year-old, and I'm putting all this stuff on him. In four years, I hope to un uniki him. Yeah, so you can Xerox all of this, this is all the thing in evidence. It's going to take a while to Xerox okay. it back to New York. Yeah, my, my poor brother gets beaten up because I'm the brown sheep of the family and he works for DLNR, so please don't kick him very hard. Um, but he is in DLNR and he gets beaten up a lot. Um, but you can get back to me for this. These guys are dying, they're cursing me, so i got to get out of here. I know what it's going to be. Okay. 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 Chairman, I'd ah, members of the board, glad you're next for My name is Jonathan Osorio. I'm a professor of Hawaiian Studies at the University of Hawaii, Manoa. I'm president of Kahea, the Hawaiian Vet Environmental Alliance. We are a 501c3 and have been testifying in opposition to the Committee on the Construction for the Bringing a Telescope on the Kahea. You have been given testimony regarding the religious and cultural significance of the mountain. And there has been considerable testimony about the violations to the approval process that has brought us up to this point. You are also aware of the overwhelming rejection of the proposal to approve a new term, new long-term lease to the university by the associate students of the University of Hawaii, ASUH, which took place on the model of campus tonight for last year. I don't think you need any more testimony about the approval process or the cultural significance, nor even really the environmental damage that according to all of the environmental impact statements conducted on Mauna, Mauna Kea, already caused by telescopes on the summit of the mountain. I believe these details have come to be seen by this board as relatively insignificant in the face of a multi-million dollar project, and the belief that the scientific potential of the telescopes outweighs even the damage that might be done to our environment or to a people's religious sensibilities. One example of this kind of thinking was the University of Hawaii Hilo's brief in response to our petition for a contested case hearing on the CDUP in January of this year. On page 9 of the UH Hilo brief, it argues that the resources of Mauna Kea, like trees for foresters, are its altitude and other physical characteristics which make it ideal for astronomy. But astronomy is not the only thing that defines the resources of Mauna Kea. It is a physical resource for everything that lives at the summit. It is a cultural resource for Kanaka Maoli as a sacred site, as a symbol of the presence of deities in the land, the sea, and the sky. It is an important historical record, not just of human activities on the mountain, but an immense geological record of this island, a record compromised by the loss of Lake Guayao since the telescopes were built. The mountain size and altitude affects weather and climate, precipitation especially. And to compromise that role, the, the role that the mountain plays, is especially foolish considering how little control we on these islands have over global climate change. We must know more, <coughs> we must know more about the effects of all of the telescopes on Mauna Kea before proceeding with any new construction. And this simply should not be pursued, except after more careful examinations of how the ecology of the mountain has already been affected. 
coupled with a better understanding of how change in that ecology affects the lands below it. In fact, Kahea's opposition to the building of the TMT is not anti-science at all. We argue that astronomy is not the only science that, is, that has important reasons to think of Maunavakia as a resource. It makes no sense to argue that environmental protections were skirted, because you already know that. You have taken the position, I believe, that the reasons for obstructing this project are not particularly important, and I would like to change your mind. The university's administration of this lease and the creation of this complex is dominated by cut corners, promises delayed, and a wholly insufficient evaluation of the damage that has been done by accretion of large-scale construction projects in a very sensitive environment. In truth, the damage done to the public trust by the, by the Stevie Wonder debacle pales in comparison to this one. Extending this lease is a huge mistake for this agency, especially without a very careful auditing and evaluation of how the university has managed this resource thus far. I suggest that you deny a new lease to the university without a serious and thorough evaluation of its conduct of the lease thus far. The ASUH students have made some important points. Environmentalists, geologists, and native practitioners have more to say. Take your time. Rethink this. This is your responsibility, and right now, your responsibility alone. Thank you very much. So have you lost form? Sorry. Have you lost form? We have not lost form. <coughs> advocate for the Office of Hawaiian Affairs, and we appreciate the opportunity to provide input and information regarding this critical decision before you uh, concerning special and sacred place. I'll be brief, uh, given the, the need for brevity. Uh, we have submitted our testimony in full and provided copies to each of the members. Uh, so uh, yeah, I can summarize with four main points several of which have been echoed by uh, others who have spoken. Uh, first, we are concerned that the proposed uh, categorical exemption from environmental review requirements, uh, we believe that they are not appropriate for a lease of this nature. We believe that they are not appropriate, uh, given first that the lease is necessary and related to plans for future contemplated telescopes. And even if it was not related to future plans for contemplated telescopes, we believe that expanding the current use for an additional 45 years would in and of itself uh, be of such cumulative impact that it exceeds the threshold uh, for a categorical exemption under environmental um, rule requirements. Secondly, OHA is concerned that the 65-year proposed lease may tie the hands of all the parties involved, BLNR, the state, uh, Native Hawaiian cultural practitioners, from uh, having the lands be put to the best possible use. Uh, it's impossible to predict what sort of changes may occur in 65 years. Uh, we're seeing great fluctuations and changes uh, in terms of federal support, federal interest. Uh, we, we note uh, some, some other sort of factors uh, that, that argue that we don't know what the future holds. Uh, and this certainly ties our hands for quite some time. Third, we believe that if the board were to approve any lease, that that lease should include conditions on future subleases that expressly ensure that meaningful compensation is received. A board member Gon asked earlier about whether or not there were examples of uh, what was paid for uh, telescope time. We've included <coughs> examples and, and referenced our sources. I believe it's on page seven of our written testimony. Uh, we've found indications ranging from $80,000 to $100,000 for uh, one day of, of telescope use. And lastly, we continue to believe that even if it is not required by law, 
an environmental site assessment would better inform all parties uh, involved before making a decision about how this special, sacred, and sensitive place is uh, utilized for the next 65 years. Thank you very much for your time, and I uh, appreciate your, your thoughtful consideration of the heartfelt comments coming from all those involved. Thank you. Wednesday, ASUH, um, for our student representatives of 14,000 undergraduate students on UH Manoa campus, passed a resolution to put a stop to this um, beast renewal of 65 years. So what this means is, or what this shows is that there's an obvious opposition within our student body on campus, and that students need to be a part of the conversation, which if it's only, if they still have 20 years, then we still have um, time to exchange dialogue about the situation. Um, there's been plenty of discussion on campus and action that is in agreement to the evidence that UH um, has done mismanagement of environmental impacts and economic usage. For example, we're in the middle of a tuition hikes while they're leasing the land for a dollar a year and um, cultural preservation. As a school that claims to be a Hawaiian place of learning, in their mission statement, the furthering of this leads to 65 years without addressing the destruction and desecration is unethical and <coughs> is unethical. Please think of the interest of the people, which is the students and the community. UH has 20 years left. There's no need for a rush. And it questions why there needs to be such um, a um, rush for extension. Thank you. Question? Yes. Did you come from Hilo to testify? No. Oh, you did not. No. So I was going to praise you for that. But. <laughs> yeah, my family's from Hilo. Thank you. I, uh, my name is Izzy Malong, I'm a graduate student at the University of Hawaii at Manoa. I also just wanted to reiterate the um, increasing opposition to not only the lease renewal right now, but the telescope development in general um, at the UH campus. So as I'm sure people are aware, there have been um, two marches in the past couple of weeks um, that have been focused around the issue of Mauna Kea and the University of Hawaii's role in the desecration and in the telescope development of Mauna Kea. The University of Hawaii in its strategic plan um, does assert that it is a Hawaiian place of learning and upholds values of Ohana, Ahupua, and Kuleana. And students on campus are starting to really come together and understand that it is up to us to define what that means. And many students are beginning to question um, the value of the telescopes on the mountain in comparison to what is that cost or what is that risk. Um, there, um, the associated uh, students of the University of Hawaii, the undergraduate student government, did pass a resolution on Wednesday, and I know that they've sent this to you folks, um, that was part of their resolution, um, opposing the lease renewal. And I was at their testimony, and the concerns that were brought up, first of all, the ASUH representation is very diverse um, in terms of where they're from and what communities they associate with. And we saw a lot of different concerns coming from different um, ASUH senators, including um, the diminishing of biodiversity in Hawaii, and especially that which is specific to the summit of Mauna Kea, um, questioning um, the idea that the university is nothing without ast astronomy research, and also being very concerned that there has been no time or space made for student input on the matter, um, 
And really, there's actually been no awareness at all that this lease renewal is taking place on the university campus, except for those uh, few concerned students. And thank you to Kaleo covering up our mural. Um, a lot more students became aware of the lease issue as well as the telescope issue. So the, the undergraduate student body does make up the majority of the student body at the University of Hawaii at Manoa, and they oppose the lease renewal. They also um, want there to be more dialogue and student-centered discussion before any lease renewal is considered and want to be part of that conversation and setting the terms um, if a lease renewal were to take place. Um, I also just wanted to submit this um, petition. This is a copy of a petition that some law students, so there's undergraduate students, there's sort of um, random students um, putting together different things, and this is a petition that some law students put together opposing the lease renewal, and it received a thousand signatures. It went um, live on Monday afternoon, and here we are on uh, Friday, and it's over a thousand signatures, so I wanted to submit that. These, these are from students' community. This is a community petition. Um, so I think that it's just important in closing that we do consider that there is increasing awareness and concern about the impacts of the telescopes on top of the mountain coming from environmental, ecological, academic, um, and cultural perspectives, as well as economic. And I would like to encourage you all to um, not... Um, well, you can end the 20-year lease if you want, but specifically, <laughs> not to uh, not to start a new 65-year lease. Thank you. <clears throat> I'm very quickly. I like to reserve my right for January and to contest the lease. Thank you. So we've officially lost quorum, which means that this board cannot make a decision on this matter today. Hello, my name is Leon Noel Peralto, and I'm submitting this testimony on behalf of myself and my own Hannah to voice our opposition to the proposed lease uh, at the summit of Mauna Kea of the University of Hawaii. I was born and raised in Hilo, Hawaii, and my ohana comes from Hamakua, and I am currently a PhD student in political science as well at the University of Hawaii at Manoa, where I dedicate my studies to the work that my ohana and I are involved in at home, caring for our aina and our kupuna uh, in Hamakua on the slopes of our beloved Mauna Awakia. Mauna Awakia, as, as many of who have come today and who have come before us have told, is kapu, it's sacred. The genealogies that we Oivi have been born from teach us this, and this is what we must continue to teach our children through our actions. Mauna Wakia is the first to be touched by the rays of the morning sun, and the first to receive its waters that fall to us from the skies. And it, and it the Mauna, and all the Akua that constitute its living functions, feed our Aina and, our, and sustain us. This is not rhetoric. This is knowledge that is based on practice that sustain our people in these islands for generations. Over the past 45 years, however, the summit region of Mauna Kea has not been properly cared for, and the human activities on it have not been managed in a way that is culturally or environmentally sustainable. Under the state's own laws, these lands are to be protected as conservation lands, and as the BLNR, you are entrusted with the responsibility of ensuring these lands are afforded such protection. The current lease has facilit facilitated the destruction of the summit landscape of Mauna Kea, transforming it from a balanced source of life to an industrial complex, poisoning in our aina from its very source. This has occurred over the span of one generation, and the proposed new lease will facilitate the perpetuation of this transformation for generations to come. This is unacceptable. Our Mauna is calling us to envision a different future for its summit. A future free of development that impedes on our Mauna's space and ability to feed our Aina and our people, and we urge you to act accordingly. We urge you to listen to the voice of the Mauna, to listen to the voice of our Kupuna, to listen to the voice of those families who have dedicated their lives to caring for and protecting this sacred place. Listen to the voices of the thousands in our community who have signed these petitions against this process and against this proposed lease and listen to the voices of the thousands of University of Hawaii students who are represented by ASUH, 
who also opposed this lease. As the sacred waters of Wael continue to drop to unprecedented low levels, the message has become ever more clear. The desecration of our sacred places mirrors the desecration of ourselves. Rescind this proposed lease and engage in the discussions and planning processes and actions necessary to ensure that our future relationships with Mauna Kea provide the Mauna, our Aina, and the many generations yet to be born with life. No telescope, university, or dollar can provide this. Mala Maya Mauna Kea. Mahalo. from all up there, from Mauna Kea and Mauna Loa. That's what feeds this whole place. And that's why it makes it so special and sacred. It's all our kuleana and our responsibility to take care of this thing for the next thousand more years. Or else we're not going to get why out. We're not going to get all of these things anymore. Because everything's going to change. You folks have responsibility. You was talking about Waiau. I talk about Waiau because that's where the shrimp and everything come from, the Opai. And that's what feeds the core. It's not only feeds the core, it feeds the birds above and so it's below. All the creatures that God that lives in Nainapua, it's all involved in all of this. Whether it's the rat, the little, the mongoose or whatever. That is all our part of our food because that's what keeps this ecosystem moving and growing. That's the balance. Now you guys cutting off everything, taking away this from the people. We get three children. My oldest is 21 years old. We get three years in college. I had to take them off the land to go. Not America, he's in Canada. My wife died 16 years ago. My daughter's birthday is next week on the 16th. They like come home. But where they gonna come home? No more all of these. Why bring them home when no more all of our culture? How come they talk all about this guy in culture? Whose culture are you guys talking about? It's all everybody we have, not just the Kanaka, the Filipino, the Japanese, everybody that lives on this island. They are all Kanaka. They are all on this island. They raise here. They get responsibility like all of us. Everybody that came here was just a guest. But now that you live here and you're part of the system, we believe in. We better take care of that for the next three generations. I thank you guys for giving me the opportunity because I got to go back to the big island. So God bless. Keep on doing the good work. Aloha. Before you leave, are you interested in the best in case for this? Yes. Uh, just wanted to make sure before you leave. Yes. <laughs> Play everything, okay? Okay. Yes, have a good day. Yeah. What's your plan now? <laughs> Thank you for letting me speak first. Okay.
guys. Aloha Chira, and I am honorable members of Board of Land and Natural Resources. My name is Jackie Hoover, and I have great respect for all of the testimony that has been given today. But I will say that I am here to give voice to my support and respectfully ask that you do approve the request from the University of Hawaii. As a native Hawaiian born, raised, and fortunate enough to continue to be living on Hawaii Island, my personal relationship with Mauna Kea goes far beyond living in its shadow and being blessed on most days with beautiful and dramatic views. Indeed, much my, sen myself, my sense of self, place, and spirituality are tied directly to Mauna Kea. I have previously spoken before this board in support of the Comprehensive Management Plan, which in its implementation, I believe, does reflect well on the University of Hawaii, the Office of Mauna Kea Management, and the DLNR, and the commitment to Mauna Kea. Recognizing that there have been mistakes made since initial implementation, there has been much progress made in managing resources and attempting to balance the needs and desires of many interests, many individuals seeking access to Mauna Kea. Your approval of the measures before you today will allow continuance of this commitment, progress, and the positive work that is being done, including to educate and provide opportunities to the public to participate in protecting and respecting Mauna Kea. Before closing, and in the interest of full disclosure and transparency, while I speak today as an individual with both lineal and cultural ties to Mauna Kea, I also have the privilege of serving concurrently as the Executive Director of the Hawaii Island Economic Development Board and as the President of Hawaii Leeward Planning Conference. I do not speak on their behalf today, however. Thank you for this opportunity. Morning, board. Morning. I just want to uh, bring you in. I just want to uh, address you this, this morning or this, today, this afternoon, um, very quickly. I know everybody's been here. Um, my name is Kimmer Bighorse. I'm a ten-year Army combat veteran. Um, I was stationed in Wahiawa and Scofield Barracks for four years. I've been here, um, disabled American veteran. I just want you to let me know that I go to the mountain. I go to Kulibo'o. I go to Manawakea to um, find peace. And this is when I heard I've been following the Idle No More movement. And <clears throat> I just want you to say that I, I don't envy your position. Okay, I don't. I know that your decisions. Um, I know you know I protected colonels, combat task force commanders in Afghanistan and Iraq. And you know, I know I know the pressure that must be on your on your shoulders to make decisions, this important decision. But I just want to say that through my experience, being a descendant of Gus Big Horse, my great great grandfather, was a warrior for the Diné Nation, um, Navajo Nation, Arizona, that we also use mountains as our place of um, religious like worship. And I fought fought over 39 months in a combat zone, uh, Baghdad and Afghanistan. Come home to the Aina, come home to Hawaii. What is my home? And still see the desecration, and still see people's religious rights are violated, especially the native people here, the Hawaiians, the Kanaka Maui. I just want to say that I support this movement. I support Mother Earth. I support the seventh generation. I come from the Iroquois, the, the Twin Towers. My ancestors helped build those Twin Towers. The Kawanakwane. I've seen enough destruction. I've seen it. Eyewitness destruction. Life, life, the end of life. I'm tired of it. This is my testimony that this mountain is sacred. We must protect religious rights, especially with our own native people, the Hawaiian people. Okay, I'm not native Hawaiian, I'm not Kanaka Maui. 
Okay, but I, I strongly know what they've gone through. The U.S. government built power lines through my mother's land, through my grandmother's land, my Nali. And she did not get any electricity. She did not get running water. Her whole life. And we live in America. I just want to say this. It has nothing to do with ownership. Nothing to do with that. Okay, I know there's legal this and that. Okay, I understand that. But if the eagle feather is a federal offense to possess an eagle feather for a non-native, how is an entire mountain not in any way an offense? Telescopes, okay? These, obviously, these, these sacred religious entities, these places where people go to worship, to, to give, okay, they, they, then, then there's Pohakaloa where there's bombing. There's all sorts of issues. And we're just here, I'm here, to defend Mother Earth. That is all. Mahalo. Um, I agree, I concur with all the testimonies that have been uh, presented here today in regards to opposing the new lease to the University of Hawaii. And um, in addition, I'd like to say that my, myself and my family are state recognized descendants to Ibukupuna that we, uh, we buried at. at um, a couple months ago, and uh, we are also NACPA claimants to Mauna Kea. Um, when we um, reburied the Ibukupuna, um, at first I was very disturbed how the university had like, uh, tried to take control of the EV, uh, tried to tell us when, how, and why to do it. Um, we opposed adamantly and um, in the end, we were able to um, eliminate it ourselves. But it was not until uh, we had to like, put up an argument as you know, we went through why, as cultural descendants, um, state recognized cultural descendants, we um, should be allowed to take care of our TV. And so, with that said, um, I don't trust that they will be good stewards of our TV kupuna and, um, going forward. And um, I would insist that if there are any more ground disturbance in the area, that um, recognized cultural descendants be at the table for discussion going forward, that there should be um, an environmental assessment done, there should be a full, complete, um, not only co uh, archaeological monitoring program going on, but also um, cultural monitoring. We should have our people there to assist the uh, AMs, and um, especially if you have recognized descendants, they should be the ones doing the cultural monitoring. Mahalo. Um, I would just like to say I strongly oppose the renewing of UH's lease of the land on Mauna Kea. For one, in my mind, UH has done enough with the telescopes installed at Mauna Kea presently. The renewing of this lease would not bring forth any educational purpose in my mind whatsoever. It would bring nothing but desecration, destruction, and annihilation to Hawaiian culture, our artifacts, and our Iwikupuna which I would be completely disturbed by, but obviously that does not seem to matter. <clears throat> because of, because as an appeal, I feel that all land on Mauna Kea should be preserved at all costs to ensure that young Hawaiians like myself have a place to connect to our aina, to our kupuna, to have a place that is Hawaiian without the distractions of foreign objects upon the aina. I am Kalakili Inouye, my Ohana and I are state recognized cultural descendants as well as Nike proclaimants, and I strongly oppose to this. Mahalo.
put my cup to my name is Candice Fujikane. I am an English professor at UH Monroe, and I'm also a board member of Kahea Hawaiian Environmental Alliance, uh, which is a community-based network of over 12,000 kupuna educators, uh, concerned citizens, many of whom are not Hawaiian like myself, but who work to protect the cultural and natural resources of Hawaii. I urge you, please do not renew the university's leases on Mauna Loa The 1998 audit of the management of Mauna Kea and the Mauna Kea Science Reserve points to the ways that the university has failed monumentally in its responsibility to protect the conservation district of Mauna Loa Moreover, the damage that the university, that done by the university, extends beyond the failure to protect the mountain. In the contested case hearing against the 30 meter telescope, what became clear is that the university is undermining and invalidating the entire environmental review process and the conservation district use process. So what has the university done in the years following the 1998 audit up until 2003, 2003 was the year that a federal court judge ordered NASA to conduct a full environmental impact statement. And the question is, why had those environmental impact statements not been required prior to 2003? Uh, why was it mandated by a federal court judge? How can the university assess whether development proposals fulfill the eight conservation district use criteria without the developer's full disclosure of environmental impact. When completed, NASA's environmental impact statement concluded that existing telescopes on Mauna Wakea had substantial, adverse, and significant impact on the mountain's fragile environment. Since then, however, the university has been aggressively pursuing development of the 30 meter telescope, an 18 story observatory. So let's ask the question who is providing legal representation for the 30 meter telescope? The University of Hawaii Attorneys. How is that possible? If the university is responsible for evaluating any proposed telescope and ensuring that pro the projects fulfill the conservation district use criteria, how is it also possible? for the university to represent the Great Meter Telescope. Second, UH attorneys have argued that since the existing telescopes have had a substantial and adverse impact on Mauna Wakea, any further development doesn't matter because the threshold of impact has already been crossed. Now, when the university attorneys argue that future impact cannot matter, the university is invalidating the entire environmental impact review process and the conservation district use process. How can the university fulfill its responsibility to protect the <coughs> conservation district when its own attorneys are invalidating the criteria used to protect it? The university cannot be allowed to continue this desecration of this sacred mountain. Aloha aina. Thank you. For this board, either um, either as a warrior or as a peacemaker, and today I'd like to actually um, address a different kuleana that I have in addition to those, because, and I should say it's because I feel that most of the points pertaining to the lease itself and most of those arguments were very well covered by um, the people who have testified in front of The specific kuleana that I have that's bringing me to speak today is that of health and the well-being of all people. Um, 
which would include Kanaka Maoli and very specifically Kanaka Maoli warriors whose health are impacted by situations like this, by processes that they may be put into should you decide to renew this lease. Um, I want to um, I want to kind of give you a little background of where that comes from because I think you folks know me in other capacities. But um, I've been schooled by many people who are pretty crucial to health here. Um, one is Dr. Kikuni Blaisdell, whom I worked with for well over 20 years and I'm still in communication with. Um, he was the one who encouraged me to get a master's degree in public health and specifically to carry on the study of the health of Kanaka Maoli as it relates to the impacts of colonization. This I have been doing. Um, I've been working with Papa Ololokahi for some time, um, specifically developing resources for to help people understand um, health issues and what can be done positively, and also specifically studying many groups, and one of very important one being the health of warriors. And I want to say why I think that is very, very important in this situation. If you choose to pass this lease, you are saying to all of these people, everyone who has testified here, you are forcing them to go to war. And that is, without question, going to affect their health. Not only have, you know, the people who have the greatest kuleana to this, the people from Hawaii Island, have had to take money that may have been used toward their well-being and that of their families to buy plane tickets to come here. If you continue this process, their health will be further impacted by that. The stress is undoubtedly <coughs> impact, a, a very, very major impact. Um, I would also like to acknowledge some other teachers that I've had. I've had three really great um, teachers as a warrior myself. Um, one of them was Kamakahukilani Wanohofen, who was a native astronomer who studied on Mauna Kea. Um, Keoloha and her sister Diane and I are all her students. And um, those practices we should be carrying on. And while she certainly was a warrior, that certainly wasn't all she was doing, but I have to say that our ability to do the other parts of the practices she taught us is impacted by the fact that every time this lady right here and I see each other, we're at war with this. And that makes us unable to continue those traditional cultural practices that we were passed on, that we were given as Kuleana. Um, I, I would also like to mention that Kamakuhuki Lani, um, she was one of three mentors that I've had and um, that Kielo has been also part of. Um, there were three students of Pilahi Paki. Their names are Kamakuhuki Lani Von Olhofen, Kavai Puna Prijin, and Puhi Pao. And those three are all my direct teachers. And I have Kuleana to carry on their work. 
and thereby to carry on the work of the kupuna ilaifaki. I'm not able to do that if all that I can focus on is struggling to make this situation pono. That should be your responsibility. That should be your kuleana to do the right thing in the first place so that we do not have to go into battle. Um, I, another teacher that is very important um, in my health studies is that I have long been a student of La'au Lapa'au. My teacher was Papa Henry Allen Awai and Mauna Kea is a very, very important place where we were taught and there are medicines that we cannot get from any other place than Mauna Kea. Those medicines would be very, very severely impacted if the university continues to hold the lease to Mauna Kea <laughs> And particularly if the development of telescopes on Mauna Kea continues. The waters of Mauna Kea, you've heard it many times, but they are beyond sacred. If you choose to renew this lease, you're choosing to have those desecrated. And you know that, and I know that, and we all know that. Because the University of Hawaii, thus far, has not been a good protector of those waters, or the la'au that grows on that mountain, or the mountain itself. The university has until 2033, so therefore, I have to say that this would be a very inappropriate time to make that determination. They thus far have not shown the capacity to be good stewards. By 2033, we may know otherwise, but at this time, we know that development has consistently <coughs> taken precedent over, over the protection of that very, very sacred place. And yes, they've done some things that were good. You know, I, I'm not saying that they have never done those things, but what I'm talking about is the protection of the sacred itself. So I must say that um, in order for me to continue my traditional cultural practices and to pass them on, for example, to my daughter who's been outside during this entire hearing and still hasn't eaten lunch, in order not to impact her ability to carry those cultural practices forward, this lease must not be passed at this time. I ask that you not impact the health and well-being of these people who sit here. If you, if you sign a lease with the University of Hawaii, their health will suffer. I ask as someone who I, I have to say, 
a big mistake. It's a real mistake. You can, you can use only like anywhere else, but leave Monica alone. Because it's the best thing with your whole life. And you know that I don't think anybody has a, the right to abuse the horizon like this anymore. They've been abused enough. Thank you. So good afternoon. Thank you for this opportunity to speak. Um, I'm sure you guys had a long day uh, listening to all the testimony, so we appreciate you guys still going on. Um, my name is Michael Aguitares. I'm a first year graduate student at the Point Studies uh, program at UH10. Um, I didn't intend to speak today, but I just felt the cool down to place my voice on behalf of me and my family. Um, I don't agree with the uh, with the lease. I don't agree to um, extend it uh, for another long, another 45 years. Um, I want you guys to consider the fact that um, the students of the ASUH put their voice in over a thousand people from the community put their voice in less than a week. I want to encourage you guys to take your time with this decision. Um, as we know, there's another 20 years left on the lease, and there's no rush uh, to make this decision now. Um, as you guys know, um, a lot of the decisions in our state, uh, they're controversial. So I encourage you guys to please take your time with this um, and avoid another debacle, um, skirting the environmental review process, um, the land on Monokia is conservation, um, so I think it's important that we remember that um, and stop the further desecration of uh, Mauna Kea. Um, I'm not paid to be here today. Um, I'm just paid here and paid in love, love for land, love for culture, love for people. Um, and I think it's important to take our time with this decision. Um, the students. The university should be involved in this um, in this process. No students, no university. So we should listen to the voice of the university students, um, not those paid to represent it. Um, I think that I think that this is a big cool down. So we should take our time. Um, if it requires a contested case hearing, I think that's what it should be. We shouldn't rush through this process. Um, the value of Mauna Kea as we could tell from today's brief, uh, very great. Uh, more than a dollar a year. Uh, I think you guys charge more for parking downstairs than a dollar a year. So, um, something to consider. Um, thank you guys for your time. Mahalo. For the record, it's bags that charges for parking. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to make sure that um, I heard um, Mr. Ishibashi bring up the lake issue. And um, I wanted to say that I am a lineal descendant to some of the community there and around there. And I would strongly object to <coughs> I want you folks to, I want the process to be pono. I don't want the university having control over that. Because, you know, we don't come forward until we have to come forward just by the very nature of it. Are you referring to the renewal of pipes? I'm referring to, uh, that's one of them. But I think the other renewal descendants have come forward and asked for a particular uh, you know, involvement in things like that. And uh, I would want to be included in that as well. Um, I just really want uh, it's 
it's a very important thing. And it's, we also have modern and historic burial there, right? So, and it includes other people uh, that I will not mention here, but they're of modern importance as well. And it's their well, family too. So I just wanted to say, to add that in, please. Yeah. Yes, and I I want to put the emphasis back in your hands to be responsible because I don't recognize the university's responsibility for anybody getting it. Okay? I mean actually we are we are responsible for our own part. Just want to state that for the record. Okay. Okay. Um, I'm on the board. I'm Chair Ayla. Mahalo for hearing testimony on this issue that is obviously so important to so many people. Um, I'm here today, oh sorry, my name is Shelly Muneoka for the record. Um, I'm here representing myself and my family. Um, and I'm here to compel you, uh, I apologize I'm going to have to read my testimony because I'm nervous. Um, most sincerely to vote no on the issuance of a new lease um, on loan to the University of Hawaii. Um, over the last 40 years, the university has made many promises, but I've come through on a few. It would not be prudent or wise to issue one a new lease, especially not one that doesn't ask for any rent. If you are just saying that all future sublease negoti negotiations will collect quote unquote substantial rent, although Mr. Copper from NHLC highlighted that the proposed lease does not require them to do that, we should ask who and what determines substantiality. We should also ask ourselves why are they not using language consistent with Chapter 171 and saying that they will be asking for fair market rent. It further begs the question why UH itself should not also be charged substantial rent, whatever that means although it's our contention that they should be also charged fair market rent. Um, it's, I wanted to say that it's painful for us to argue about finances when you're talking a, about a place that you consider so secret, but I acknowledge that that um, standard of sacredness was shattered 40 years ago when development first began there, and now at this point we um, need to you know, deal with the, the, the uh, Rallying the current situation. We shouldn't reward UHS poor management by giving them more time to do more harm to our sacred mountain. Both the 1998 and 2005 state audits found that UH is falling short on managing the cultural and natural resources of Mauna Kea. In fact, the 2005 audit specifically states how jurisdictional issues between UH and BLNR need to be cleared up and failing to do so would likely result in a further harm to the Mauna. This is the opportunity to do that. UH has this tricky habit of claiming to be a state entity as a public university when it benefits them to be so, and a private entity when that designation suits them. They want all the autonomy without any of the accountability. It seems that BLNR has ceded the management authority to UH, but retains all of the liability and the ultimate responsibility for the protection of the cultural and natural resources on Mauna I don't understand how or why this is in the agency's interest. Um, and this, this negotiation, negotiation is a chance to end this problematic arrangement or at least clarify that relationship and return management authority to DLNR um, where, though not perfect, there are more clearly defined procedures and opportunities for the public to intervene. The primary developer should not and cannot be expected to, realistically expected to protect the culture and natural resources of a place it seeks to develop. On page 5 of the staff submittal for item D5, UH states that it is seeking a new 65-year lease to provide the basis for developing sublease agreements with current and any potential future telescope projects. There is no sign that development will slow on the Mauna, even after there have been admissions and independent findings of substantial adverse impacts that have already occurred. Page 15 of the submittal reminds us that the area will be subject to the eight criteria that are applied to all proposed projects for any conservation district. UH and their subleases can't meet these criteria and don't currently meet these criteria. Their subdivision through subleases has indeed intensified the use, the land use. Natural beauty and open space have not been enhanced or preserved. There has been public health issues as a result of the telescope projects, um, not only to person 
people because of the stress, but also there's been there the hydraulic spill, uh, fluid spill, there's been other um, mishaps that have happened now. Um, and as was previously mentioned in my testimony, the TMT management plan, which is a project backed by UH as they're representing um, them throughout the contested case and appeal for the TMT, um, that management plan itself admits the impacts have been substantial and diverse. Why should UH be allowed to do further harm? Monica is sacred and it's so shameful the damage that has already been done. And there are so many ways to strengthen protections for the Monica. Prohibit new cell bases. Or put in provisions that say new projects must only be constructed within the existing telescope footprints. Or charge fair market rent. Or better yet, say no to any kind of lease extension at all. So many times we've heard that we can't change what's already happened, but today we have a chance to secure better protection for the mountain. And if the lease passes as is, we will look back at this day and remember that opportunity missed, that Kuliana neglected. <coughs> or conversely, if you vote not to grant a new lease, this day will be remembered as the day the tide turned, the day that the end to further desecration of Mauna Kea came back into view. Please vote to protect our sacred Mauna. UH has had 40 years to show Hawaii that they value our sacred mountain as they repeatedly claim, and they have resoundedly failed to do so. It is naive to think that they'll be any different in the next 65 years. Mauna Kea is too important to roll the dice and cross our fingers that they'll be better. As Kealo has said nearly 15 years ago, the only thing the university should be asking for is forgiveness. <laughs> Please vote no on the news. The last, last thing, I know that was a lot, that I wanted to say is that when we leave this building, we walk outside, I want everybody to look at the building immediately, diamond head of this one, which is about, I counted the, the floors, it's 15 stories tall. The proposed TMT is 18 stories tall, and I want us all to ask ourselves if that a building of that size belongs on Mauna Kea, because a new lease to UH it will allow um, further desecration. So please vote no on the lease renewal again. Mahalo for all your time and consideration. significant matters that need to be addressed through continuing dialogue and factual information. Criticisms repeated today really old news. A lot of reference to 1998 the legislative report. And those repeating those messages do so for it by design. We have come much too far to allow a group of people to spread fear and to disinfest with insinuation and falsehoods that disparage the efforts of many, many community-minded individuals. In fact, over 13 years ago, the 2000 Master Plan established a new form of community-based management of Mauna Kea, led by the Office of Mauna Kea Management, the Mauna Kea Management Board, and the Kau Kumana Advisory Council based at the University of Hawaii in Hilo. This new management ensures community participation in the management and review of projects proposed to Mauna Kea. In fact, the follow-up <coughs> legislative audit in 2005 raised some improvements made by the university under the master plan, especially noting the establishment of a Mauna Kea Ranger program 
and other factors. Granted, not everything was there, but we're on our way. But this fact, this happens to be uh, ignored by those a lot, a lot of the opposition members. In fact, the comprehensive management plan and the four sub plans the cultural resources, the natural resources, the public access, and the decommissioning plans were approved in the years 2009 and 2010 respectively by the Board of Land and Natural Resources. After public meetings were held on Hawaii <coughs> Island and vast community support, all of these plans are the state's plans really to manage the mountain. In fact, major milestones have been successfully achieved. Complete archaeological inventory survey was completed for 11,000 acres <coughs> of the Monica Science Report Reserve. An accepted burial treatment plan has been developed. A successful ranger program has been developed. Natural resource stewardship programs, including surveys and studies on native and invasive flora and fauna. Community the volunteer participation in invasive species weed pools and silver sort plantings are happening. OMTM staff, staff members now include a cultural officer, a natural resources program officer, a program and project compliance officer, and eight rangers. <coughs> Astronomy employees and new workers on Mauna Kea now undergo cultural and resource, natural resource orientation before being allowed to work the mountain. In fact, remember the once threatened big bug? Research funded by the Office of Mauna Kea Management prompted the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service to remove the big bug as a candidate that no longer needs federal protection. The University of Hawaii at Hilo and the Office of Mauna Kea Management are managing the resources of Mauna Kea for dedication and righteousness. UHH is achieving its commitments and has instilled spirited community trust through the excellent performance of the Office of Mauna Kea Management. Issuing this new 65-year lease will allow them to continue managing and doing what's right for Mauna Kea. Before I close, though, I'd like to clarify some of the points made. Just, just a few. There are a lot of points that are going to be good. Some of them, like for example, with Lake Waiau, a lot of responsibility and, and blame is placed on the University of Hawaii for Lake Waiau. Uh, uh, I want to remind the board that Lake Waiau is really in the Natural Area Reserve, which is not part of the managed areas for UHH. It is not part of the UH managed areas. I think that's important because we are not really charged with managing the natural area. Uh, I, know, I know that uh, a lot of people talk grumble about what, what we have done over the last 45 years. I would say, you know, probably 30, maybe 32 years prior to that, I think a lot was not done. But I think the last 13, we did a lot. You know, someone talked about the burial treatment they got. But don't forget, there's a burial council that we have to work with to get advice and help to handle ED. The, um, someone mentioned about the medicine, but the medicine that you, they want to uh, harvest from the mountain, it's not on the summit area. It's at the lower levels, we believe, lower elevations. So please don't confuse the issues of what we are responsible for and managing with other factors. The, uh, the lease form, by the way, new lease form allows us, the new master lease allows us to go in and try to renegotiate the subleases to get fair market rent out of them as compared to the old 1968 version of the state lease which we are currently under. The current, the proposed lease uh, amendments had a lot of conditions which we insisted on and we insisted that include in the lease so that people following us that are in charge will be bound by written uh, documentation that we will follow certain things. And this is part of what we ask in, in the new lease. To, to put it in a lease, don't guess anymore, we want to beef up the lease and carry it forward from now on. You know, the issue today is really the master lease. Everybody talk about the financial, about the sub-lease and stuff. That's really not the issue. If we're able to get the new lease and we're able to negotiate, renegotiate the sub-leases, we will come back to this board for the approval of the sub uh, provisions if anything happens. And with that, I'd like to uh, thank the board members for your time and 
I'm giving you this opportunity to present a few comments. Thank you. Good evening, Dan Purcell. I'd like to comment just a, just briefly on a procedure in this hearing. Uh, I know I received notice of this meeting uh, late fr uh, Friday evening, just prior to 6 p.m. And if you're on the Big Island and it's Friday evening and you receive notice of this and you're a parent or a worker or anyone else, to be able to put together travel plans to get here to Oahu and buy plane tickets and all that stuff to get here is quite a production. And I understand, you know, you're, you're, you're within the sunshine law in doing that, but as a practical matter, it really uh, disenfranchises a lot of people who this is near and dear to them. Um, the one gentleman spoke about his social security payments and, and that his ticket here was almost half of his social security payment and that story can be told over and over and over again. So I've always been an advocate since I've been coming to these meetings of providing other locations on the big island and, and the other neighboring islands uh, to be able to participate in these meetings through video conference. I understand there are challenges as the network goes down and you have to stop the meeting. I understand there are problems. But I think it's time to really pursue that to give people an opportunity to participate. We all have to trust and believe in the system and our representative democracy, and you are those representatives, and we have to be able to trust and have the faith that you're doing the right thing. And that means having transparency and accessibility. Um, I know I've addressed this room a number of times. I was told today that the capacity of this room is 50 individuals. Well, earlier today, we had 60 individuals in the room. I'm sure the fire department is going to come here and run everybody out, but the fact of the matter is we were over capacity and we had people in the outside area who weren't able to fully participate in the meeting. They weren't able to see the presentations and the human interaction, which is very important. And um, and, and as mentioned, though, one late speaker was here, her daughter was here, and wasn't able to even have lunch. I face the same challenges as I come to these meetings, but it's even more difficult when you come from off island you're traveling, you're trying to get your last minute, and you still have to try to get food. And there could have been some accommodation, possibly, to take a lunch break or something at some point to accommodate these people. So I appreciate all your efforts and all the work and time you've been into it. You're incredibly knowledgeable, especially the chair. But I think there's a lot we could do to improve um, participation in the Board of Land and Natural Resource meetings, including changes to the board. Thank you very much. And with that, I will close public testimony. Uh, there will be no decision making because we don't have quorum. Last quorum. So, decision making will be another day. Can I ask a question? So, <coughs> when you put decision making, you mean like the agenda is for decision making in December? Will you folks offer opportunity for public testimony again there, or is, or is it closed completely? Okay. Decision making in December. Can I ask yourself if the um, the board members who were not here to hear the testimony, um, that they would be making the decision? Yes, yes. So They would make the decision based upon what they heard, and they weren't here to hear this. They're welcome to ask us. We have the written testimony that was submitted afterwards. It's, a, it's not a perfect system. I'll file a, I'll send a link to the video. There you go. There's a technical question. So, in, in the case of petitions being need to be filed for the FESTA case, is it 10 days from this meeting or is it 10 days from December? Mm -hmm. The final the decision, decision, right? I don't want to give you advice, but I, I believe that it is 10 days following the, the decision. decision.